I remember quite vividly when Bite Beauty was only lip products. I've been pretty excited to see them expand over the last year and a half to two years, but to be honest, I've not been intrigued enough by any of their new products to try anything other than their lip products. That is changing today because they have come out with a line of what might be my favorite makeup product ever, cream blushes. The Daycation Whipped Blush is a creamy blush that promises a just back from vacation glow. It is vegan, cruelty free, and it is also marked as quote, clean at Sephora. It retails for $32 each and you get uh, one third of a fluid ounce, which is pretty standard for a cream blush. That seems to be like across the board, the standard cream blush size because generally a little bit goes a long way. The Bite Beauty Daycation Whipped Cream Blush comes in four shades and today we are going to swatch and test this new formula in all four shades to see which of them are worth picking up. I'm going to put each of them on my face so you can see them in action. If you can't get enough of new makeup, be sure to hit the subscribe button because I am here every week sharing my beauty habit with you. So first we have Coconut Rum. This is a luminous warm bronze. I picked this up because I thought that there was a possibility it could look really good. I have a couple shades that are described as warm bronzes that I really love, like blush shades. One that comes to mind is the Fenty Glow shade, their blush in Fenty Glow. I love that blush. It's so beautiful. It's like a very neutral shade. And so I thought maybe this could be similar to that. No, it just looks, honestly, it looks like I kind of put red dirt on my face. That's just, I mean, some warm bronzy shades do that to me because I am very fair. So this just doesn't work for me. I feel like it's just too orangey. And if you are as light as I am and a neutral or a cool tone person, this is not, not gonna be a shade for you. Melon Mojito is a glowing peach. I automatically notice that these have a shift quality to them. It's almost like a little bit metallic. And that's something that I'm really interested to see how well it works in the shades that I think are gonna be more flattering on me because I don't tend to find those shifts to look very natural. And this product is kind of promising to be like a natural vacation glow. We'll see, I could be completely off base here, but it's just something that once I was like playing with them and swatching them around on my fingers and on my palette, I was like, oh, I wonder how that's going to work out. Okay, this shade is demonstrably better than, than the first one. I love saying the word demonstrably lately. I need a synonym for demonstrably. Noticeably, noticeably. The shade is noticeably better suited for me than the coconut rum shade that we first tried. So as I'm seeing the shift of this in person, I actually really like it. And I think that this could really work well with like no base makeup on, like just like no makeup on at all. And this on the cheeks, I think this formula could probably really shine in that application. The shade does look better on my very fair skin than the first one, but I do think it's still a little too warm for me. I don't see myself using this much. Maybe if I self tanned, uh, when I use self tanner, it does add a little bit of warmth to my skin. So maybe if I was self tanned, this could possibly work for that, but I just don't think that I'm gonna reach for this shade very much. The one circumstance I could see myself maybe reaching for this color would be if I do have a self tan later in the summer and I wanna throw this on on like a no makeup day where obviously I'm self tan, but I'm not wearing any other makeup. I think it could work for that, but otherwise I just don't think it's flattering enough that this is a cheek color that I'm gonna reach for. A lot of times I base my entire look, I'm talking like my clothes and everything around the, the cheek and lip color I wanna go with. I don't think I'm gonna be reaching for this. I'm wanting to kind of revolve around this because it just doesn't look super flattering on its own. So the third shade we have here is Hibiscus Slush. Now, hibiscus slush is described as a radiant berry. I tend to love berry shades, so I'm really excited to try this one. It looked absolutely beautiful when I was swatching it out on the palette. Now we're talking. This shade, yeah, this 
the cooler tone shades in this are what we're going for. If you're very fair, I would say definitely stay away for sure from coconut rum and probably peach, unless you are a warm toned fair person, then perhaps the peach could probably work for you if you are warm tone. I myself am like neutral, leaning towards cool. I can generally stay pretty close to neutral and I can go pretty far cool, but going very far warm doesn't really work for me. And we can tell immediately because look at this. The berry is just a nice, beautiful, soft glow. And I have to be honest, this is the first one that I've really felt like, oh my gosh, I kind of like this formula, I, the color is such a big part of that when it comes to blush. It's hard for me to like a blush formula if I don't like the color. I think this is really beautiful. I'm gonna sit back a little bit just so you can see it from afar. I really like this color. I think it's very nice. I love that berry, that hint of purple in there. Very lovely. And I love the shift on this one, that kind of metallic radiant shift I was talking about. I love that on the cheek. I think it just gives such a dimension in a glow. Wow, this one, ooh, I like that a lot. All right, we're gonna leave this on as we do the last shade, which is Watermelon Marg, because then we're gonna compare, contrast, and decide which of them we like the best and which one is going to get to stay on my face and which one is gonna get removed. Watermelon Mark is a light pink pearl. This was the shade I was first drawn to that I thought, oh, this would be the shade for me. So let's find out if I was right or maybe Barry is gonna come and surprise us. Okay, I'm super impressed with this. I mean, I love Barry too. I'm not sure which one I like more, but I will say that when they're marketing this as you know, like a fresh from vacation glow, this actually literally looks like my cheeks are just flush. This looks like the way I look when I go to the park with my daughter and even though I wear sunscreen, I get hot and so I flush a little bit. That's what this shade looks like on me. It's actually really fantastic. I am, oh my gosh, I really like that. That is definitely a very nice natural flush. I do wanna see if I can build it up a little bit. It's very like soft and understated and I tend to like to look a little more flush than this, but the shade right here, this is a really good shade. I think they kind of knocked it out of the park with this one for fair people. I don't know, I'm interested to see how the other shades look on others who have different skin tones than me because for me I feel like this is definitely kind of like if you are fair, if you're cool or neutral, you need to stick with these two. And if you're neutral to warm, you need to stick with the other two, the coconut rum and the peach one. I feel like they're very much divided kind of into those two camps. All right, so over here is the watermelon marg and over here is the hibiscus slush. And I'm gonna be honest, I think I like hibiscus slush better. I really do. If I'm going for just like a very soft, barely any flush, I think I would go with the watermelon marg but I want a little more like brightness to my skin and I want it to work more as a blush today versus just as a natural flush. I actually want like a blush blush. So I think I'm gonna stick with Hibiscus Slush because I really love that. And I was not expecting that at all. Like that was the one that I, when I was looking at my cart and trying to decide if I wanted to get all four or maybe just get three of them, the one that I was ready to like get rid of or the one or two were the coconut rum because I, I knew there was a chance it wasn't gonna work and hibiscus slush. And I'm so glad I did get rid of hibiscus slush because it is, or hibiscus, excuse me, hibiscus slush because it is fantastic. Oh my goodness. Application wise, I thought these ran on really nicely. They blended out well. I don't think they blended out as well as say the Rare Beauty cream blushes. I didn't even find them to blend out as well as the Melt Cosmetics blush light blush that I just recently tried in a first impressions video, but they blend out nicely if you do it in a certain way. What I figured out as I was applying was to use your fingers as much as you could and then maybe go in with like a kind of loose bristled brush, not too loose, but just loose enough and stipple to get the blend on the rest of it. When I tried to use a sponge, and let me tell you what, my sponge is not too damp. I literally take like a towel to get water out of the sponge. I just want it barely damp. But when I tried to use this barely damp sponge, Beauty Blender, to blend, 
I found it pulling out product underneath, moving around the blush and kind of leaving me with like bald spots under my blush, which I'm not, not a fan of. So I think that the application is pretty good. It leaves a tiny bit to be desired. The finish is gorgeous. I love that it's just a very nice glowy finish. It does feel very much like what they're marketing as that just back from vacation glow. I think they're right on point with that. That being said, this is $32, correct? Yes, $32. All right, so the Rare Beauty cream blushes are 21. The Tower 28 blushes, cream blushes are $20. I don't think these are any better than either of those. I don't see any circumstance where I would reach for these before I would reach for those. So with those coming in at at least $11 under the price of these, I just don't think these are really worth it. Sorry, Bite Beauty. Um, I tried, I tried it. I think these are lovely blushes, but when it comes to cream blush right now, it's such a hot product. There are so many of them out there and you can get ones that are just as good, if not, in my opinion, a little bit better at a less expensive price. So that's what I'm gonna keep doing. Uh, final opinion on these is a pass. They are the victim of a very hot cream blush competitive market right now. Honestly, there's nothing that sets these apart. If there was something that I could see that made me feel like they could be used in a certain application that's gonna really set them apart from the Rare Beauty blush or the Fenty cream blushes, I would say sure, go for it. But there's really not. Even that like special shift that I saw initially with them when I was swatching them and when I first put them on the cheek, it's kind of worn down now. I don't really see it anymore. It's a lot more muted and I think you get as much glow once the Rare Beauty ones kind of set in. Let me know in the comments below if you plan on picking any of these up. I'm very interested to see how popular these do or do not become because I just don't see anything that special about them. If you're interested in watching more makeup reviews, be sure to check out my reviews playlist. You can also watch my first impressions videos where I just give like my first word vomit thoughts about new makeup I'm trying. I hope to see you over there. And until then, you take care of yourself. Bye.